Hello. Oh, I love it. Hi. Good high five. <laughs> Welcome. How are you? I'm doing great, thank you. What about you? I'm I'm good. I, I are you finding it cold here? Oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, colder, colder than Tahiti for sure. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, the rest of us have been here like, oh my gosh, it's so, su it's so great, the sun is out, and you're like, this is really chilly. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> context, people, context counts. So, we're here to talk about coral reefs and some of the great work that you're doing at Coral Gardens. Um, but before we start there, what is a coral reef? Because I think we've seen pictures of the Great Barrier Reef, and so we all think we have an idea of it, but have we got it right or is it something slightly different? Yeah, uh, thank you uh, first for, for being here today. It's, it's, it's an amazing opportunity. So Coral Reef, they became uh, all my life, like that's my daily work and um, I, I just love them. A Coral Reef, it's like an um, underwater city. It's like, uh, it's like Paris, you know, you have fish, you have sharks, you have species and Every one of them has a specific role to play. You have some little fish that are cleaning the, the shark's teeth, tooth, and uh, it's 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 life. It's one of it's the most biodiverse biodiverse ecosystem on the planet. That's the biggest the biggest hotspot of biodiversity on Earth. It's the cor in the cor coral triangle, like close to Indonesia, and um, a coral is is really hard to to explain it, but it's it's an animal. It's a colony of tiny animals that we call the polyps. They're a family of the jellyfish, and they are like they have tentacles, and they live uh, in a symbiotic relationship with a, a tiny algae that we call the zooxanthellae. So they're a they're animals. Exactly, the corals are animals. Correct. And why are they so? We hear a lot about them, and there's a lot of. Um, press around loss of coral reefs. Why are our coral reefs so important? We call the, the coral reef the, the rainforest of the seas. They are, that's exactly uh, what they are and, and they are so important. Like they, are, they are home for one quarter of all marine life and even if the big dog teeth tuna doesn't live inside the corals, they, they, they need the tiny fish to, to live. You know, it's, it's like the balance, it's the base of the ecosystem. And our blue planet, need a healthy ocean, we need a healthy ecosystems, and coral reef is just life, it's, it's life on our planet, yeah. I love that you describe it as the forests of the ocean, because we understand forests, and we understand the role that the forests play in cleaning the planet, in balancing life, and so to be able to see the corals as doing the same in the ocean, I think it's something that at least we can all relate to. Exactly, and like uh, my friends from Under the Pole said, it's, it's something we are not really familiar uh, with, you know, like a lot of people, they see trees, they are on land, but there is so much few people that have the chance and the opportunity to, to go under the surface and to see the coral reef, to see the fish, and so not enough people uh, talk about it. They don't know, like there is not enough action happening right now for, for, for them, yeah. Why are they so important? So, you know, we know that they're dying. How have, how have we got to this point? What, what is it that's killing our coral reefs? Is it some of the stuff that we were speaking, that Far and Tony and I were speaking about before? Is it something else? How have we got to this point, point that they're now endangered? Yeah, I mean, the situation is simple. Over the, they are here on our, on our blue planet for millions of years. But in just like a couple decades, we have lost half of the coral reef worldwide. Half? Half, like 50%. But, the, the, but, the, but the world is 70% ocean, that's a lot of coral. E exactly, you have like, and France, it's the only country with coral reef in every ocean. Has a big role to play in their conservation. So that's why I'm here today, it's to, to, to tell the story of the reef. And the, the coral reef, the scientists, they are clear. They estimate that if nothing is done by 2050, 90% of them will be condemned. So they could be the first ecosystem to entirely collapse from, from our planet. And they, they are the ocean lungs. And the ocean is, is the lungs of our planet with the forest. So we, we need to do something. And, and now, yeah. But how did we get here? How, yeah. what, are we, what are we doing that means our corals are endangered? You know, I'm, get, I'm getting the impetus. We have to do something the ocean is 70% of the world, and we're losing corals at a faster rate, it sounds like, than we're losing forests. But how, how are we killing them? What are we doing? 
So two reasons, the main two reasons why coral reefs are, are dying and disappearing around the world, the first one is global warming. Like the rising temperature of the water is going to stress the, the, the coral and they're going to bleach. We are talking about coral bleaching even happening at the Great Barrier Reef, in the Florida Keys, in Tahiti. And that's what's happening right now. It's like they're getting stressed and they bleach and they're dying. And uh, the second one is ocean acidification. And then if you combine this with like overfishing, runoff of the water, chemicals into farming. So we, yeah, it, it, this is what I call a global issue. Because to, today, right now, in Paris, we all breathe the same oxygen. And half of it is coming from healthy ocean. But with global warming, we are all responsible for, for them disappearing. So it's, it's, it, we are all connected to the coral reef and the ocean, and it's, it's a global issue, and that's maybe one of the biggest challenges that we are facing right now, but nobody's talking about it. We're talking about it here now, aren't we? We are talking about it here now. We're going to make it make Let's it. Let's do known. this. <laughs> so knowing about the problem is one thing, and it's all well and good to say we have a big issue, we need to act, we have to do something now. Yeah. What can we do? I know you're doing great work at Coral Gardens. How do we... How do, we, how do we turn this around? Yeah, exactly. The, I think uh, that the, 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 the change is, is happening. When I talk to all those people uh, at this event, there, there's clearly something going on. You know, we talk about to the new generations and the older ones, and there are amazing innovation and solutions coming. And so there are a lot of great projects around the world that are restoring the reef. It's, uh, so we, we are planting trees on lands See, since thousands of years. But it's only a couple of decades that we are planting corals. You know, we are gardeners on land. And my dream with coral gardeners was to create a new job, to create, to be a gardener in the water. And that's what we did. I hired some of my fishermen, childhood friends, surfers, and now they are, they are gardeners, the reef guardians, like taking care of their favorite reef and they needed to, to live. So I think we all have a, a role to play, like, Tony and, and our dear friends were, were, were saying we, we need to know about the ocean, we need to talk about it, about the planet in general. We need to see on a daily basis what we can do to reduce our carbon footprint. Me, I stopped eating, eating red meat like three years ago, and this is maybe a little change, but it's the biggest reason of, of carbon emission on the planet at the moment. So if you do some little changes and everyone are doing them will have tremendous impact on the long run. So I think it's about supporting the people on the field, on the ground, like the organization. It's about doing our daily chances and just spreading the world, yeah. Uh, I, I like the way that you kind of bring it back. It is down to global warming. These things are not, they're all, everything's interconnected and it's, it's easy to kind of go, the corals are over there, what am I supposed to do about it? But when you say actually the reason they're dying is because the temperatures are rising. And if temperatures are rising and we can all do something about it, it does bring it back to home. You also mentioned that you and your mates <laughs> grow coral. How the heck do you do that? <laughs> exactly. So I grew up on a tiny pearl farm, like a, a bungalow in the middle of the South Pacific Ocean. Like we saw some picture of Mooria, French Polynesia, and spent a lot of time growing up uh, in the water, like the coral reef, it's, it's my playground. And when I was 16 years old, I went surfing and I saw that my playground is, was, was changing and disappearing. So I said, I have to do something about it. So uh, I started planting corals when I was 16 years old. I will always remember that, that first afternoon when I met a marine biologist uh, on my island and I was introduced to what we call ecosystem restoration, the fact of, of gardening corals. Uh, crystal clear water, you have the nursery table, you have hundreds of little coral fragments growing. You're walking in the water and you have your fish coming in between your hands, around your, your face, and, and, and you're, you're just fragmenting your tiny coral, planting back, and you, co you come a couple months later, and it's twice the size, and you have already some, some tiny crabs and little damsel fish that, that choose your, your coral as their new home. And I, I told myself, this is the coolest thing on earth. That's what I want to do in my life. So <laughs> after that, I went to talk to, the, to all the big scientists, like from, from the CNRS, from the gum station of, of Berkeley. And, and I told them, guys, I'm 16 years old, and this is what I want to do. I want to be on the field to, to help the corals. What can I do? <laughs> and the big PhD, they told me, little buddy, calm down. <laughs> 
you're, you're getting a bit carried away. Yeah, you're, you're not a bit relaxed. You're only 16, finish your high school, do three years of biology degree, do a master of five years of marine biology. And if you're smart and sharp enough, you do a PhD <laughs> of na eight, nine years before you can sit with us and maybe we study the reef together. Sounds like a long time. Yeah, and me, I was done with school. I, I look at them, I say, this is crazy. I, I love science and I still believe that you can only protect and conserve and restore something you understand. Yeah. And right now we don't know enough about the reef, but being in laboratory, that, that, that wasn't me. So I told them that one day I will hire them. <laughs> <laughs> And this is what's happening right now. <laughs> now they're applying for a job. We have three full-time uh, doctors, like PhD level, working for coral gardeners, and, and it's game on, yeah. <laughs> I love that as an inspiration, because I think sometimes in this space, there is that you need to be a scientist, and, and, and at the same time, there's nothing wrong with... We need you scientists. We're not anti-scientists. Sure. We, we love you. Do your good work. And it, we also need people like you who are just <coughs> ready to make things happen with what we've got right now. Completely. I mean, we need way more scientists. We don't know enough about the core if we don't know the mechanisms, how they work. Uh, and we need people to be on the field to tell us how we can protect them. But also we need people who just love doing their work, love their playground, the ocean, the, the, the forest, and that's going to be hap happy being a gardener, not with trees and, and birds, but with, with corals and, 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 and fish. And, and, and I think that's the future, you know, we need the economy, the ecology to meet together and create purpose-driven jobs, yeah. I'm going to ask you a silly question about planting coral. Do you take a seed and <laughs> put it in the sand? <laughs> it's not exactly it, you know, we, corals are animals, so it's similar with plants, you know, when you have a forest happening on a forest of, of shen, like the big trees, you have some, some branches that are going to fall on the ground, and if you do your work correctly, you can take the healthy part of the branch, put it in a nursery for a couple months, and then plant it back onto the, in the ground. And that's exactly the same with the corals. We look for heat-resilient corals that we call the super corals. So uh, we have three marine biologists in the team and they are going to patrol the reef during the stress period, the bleaching time, and identify the mother colony, 40 years old, that resisted to all the bleaching even happened in the past. And we're going to fragment those corals, put them into coral nurseries. We have thousands of corals at the moment growing in the nursery in French Polynesia. And then when they are grown up, when they are ready, we're going to plant them back into damaged areas of reef. And that's the final and, and last step. It's to see your coral growing and to bring back the, the marine life and biodiversity. Yeah. See, I've got an education because I was thinking there was a seed and there's no seed. <laughs> uh, so, so now we know how coral is grown. You've taken farming coral um, to a super high tech arena, back to the, back to the scientists he now hires. Um, <coughs> Tell us a little bit about your reef operating system. Yeah, thank you. So Reef OS, Reef Operating System, was the first technology we developed. Because like us as divers, we can only stay a couple hours in the water. And you, when you are out there, the fish, they don't behave the same way. So three years, four years ago, I was telling Tayano, Maurite, my, my early team member, my brothers from, from the island, guys, Look at what is happening at the Silicon Valley, at like Google, SpaceX, Tesla, all the breakthroughs. And we need, like, imagine if we, we could apply only 1% of, the, of those breakthroughs into ocean conservation and planting corals. We, we're going to speed up the impact. And they look at me and they say, but Tits, that, that's my <laughs> nickname, Titwan, how, how will you meet some, some Silicon Valley engineers? <laughs> yeah, on the island, everyone called me Tits. <laughs> and, uh, and Tayano and Maurite, they look at me and they say, Tituan, like, how will you meet some Silicon Valley engineers? We are in the middle of the ocean in Tahiti. <laughs> and three years and a half ago, I met uh, Dr. Drew Gray, uh, who was the first guy that Elon Musk hired to develop the Tesla self-driving car, the autopilot with AI. And I took his, one of his engineers on his own moon to Tahiti to plant coral with me. And he told me, hey, buddy, I have 30 minutes call with you and my, and my boss, like the CTO. And uh, just go for it. So I end up on a Google Meet with Drew, and uh, I told him about the project, and that's 
and he stopped me and he said, buddy, that's the first day I am quitting Silicon Valley to, re to realize my childhood dream, saving the ocean with technology, and I have no precise plan. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I was, okay, buddy, don't move. Coco, don't move from this call. And uh, I was just thinking about how we could use the ocean to see from the smartphone, the corals growing with AI, the number of fish coming back. And he, he stopped me and said, buddy, I, lo I love the vision, I love the story, let's make this happen. So three years and a half uh, ago, Drew jumped into the project and we created a new department, a research and development center called the CG Labs, the Coral Gardeners Labs, where we are developing the, solu the solutions of tomorrow for the reef. Like we have an artificial intelligence that can tell you in real, in real time the number of fish which, which species coming back onto the reef that we are restoring. And we have an underwater application on the smartphone that is, is helping us monitor the growth and the health of the corals. And we have all those connected like sensors, cameras that are providing real-time data to the cloud infrastructure and to all of our experts, the scientists. And so we are using tech like Apple and Tesla did, but for the ocean, yeah. So you, you're rolling your sleeves up and growing Yep. You're looking at the data and the science, and then you've brought WYSIBANG technology into it as well. Exactly. So we try not only to have the scientists one side, the, the engineer one side, and the guys on the field. We bring them all under the same roof, like at CG Labs, and, uh, and we have PhD scientists from Berkeley, like iTech coming from SpaceX, like MIT, Tesla. And, and, and the guys, the gardeners, my buddies on the field, and they all together develop the tools that our coral gardeners, they need to be good at doing their job. I want them to be the James Bond of, of, of planting corals, yeah. I mean, it's clear you think small. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what, is, what is your big vision? Because the way you're describing things <coughs> and how far things have come from the 16-year-old that was speaking to scientists and saying, how do I do more of this? Because I can see what's happening right at my shores. I used, to, I used to surf here, and now it's not the same. What is your big vision? If you and I were sat here in, say, five or 10 years' time, what, what is your hope for what not just coral gardens looks like, but what we've managed to do for the oceans? You know, when, when I'm in my garden, in front of my house, it's, it's my coral garden. You know, I, it's shallow water. You can walk like you're in a real garden, and, and you see the thing changing. You see the, there is less and less fish, you, there is less and less colors year after year. And with El Nino coming next year, it's, it's scary times for, for the ocean, for the reef, and for us, because it's, it's half of the oxygen we breathe coming from healthy ocean again. So. You know, six years ago when I started Coral Gardeners, I dropped out of school. I, I called my parents, I said, Mom, Dad, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm fucking dropping out, you know? I want to realize the project of my dream, start Coral Gardeners, and I will see what I can do for, for the reef. And, and I was in my bedroom with my little brother of 14 years old, and now we have 42 full-time employees, some of the world's best experts in, on the field. And, uh, I saw all the things that we were capable of doing in just six years of time, you know, like in 2019, we released a video that is in the top five of the most, of the most viewed video ever on the Instagram platform, like 78 million views, and we gained half a million followers in just uh, seven days. Like, I saw that today, wherever you are on the planet, whatever the academic background you have and the age you have, you can reach the world with important messages. And so my message, my message today to, to Paris, to France, and to the world is that, yeah, change is coming, clearly coming, and everyone can, can, can do something. And uh, I would love to take you all of you guys to, to plant some corals with me, to, no, no, but to be in the water, to see the impact, because I think it's so important to be able to, 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 to make the invisible visible and to see the impact. And when you plant your coral, and you see it growing, and then you see the fish coming in your baby coral that you planted, that gives me hope for the future, yeah. You're leaving us. <laughs> your passion is so inspiring, and you're leaving, it, it leaves each of us individually with no excuse for not taking action. For those of us who perhaps are a little bit scared of 
getting into the deep blue ocean. You have an adopt a coral yeah. program. How the heck do we do that? Yeah, we have, a, <laughs> we have basically a solution for, for everyone to join us in, in saving the coral reef. Uh, like a couple years ago, like six years ago, we were just a bunch of school dropouts, surfers, fishermen, and I was like, no way we're going to get some governmental funding. Uh, and <laughs> today we have supporting by amazing companies. Our biggest sponsor at the moment is Rolex. We joined one year ago the initiative Perpetual Planets. I'm, su I'm super happy and honored to, to be able to represent this initiative. And six years ago, this didn't exist. So I was like, how we are going to fund our mission? So people were adopting stars. And I was like, we have thousands of corals growing in the water. Why don't people from Paris, from New York, from Australia, can adopt the coral on our website. For, and and, and, and we, I launched the program with my little beer. I was building the website with Tayano, and we put the picture of the corals, and then a, an American people adopted the first coral. We ran in the water to plant the coral, take a picture and sending, and then all his friends adopted some corals for, for 25 euros, and we we're like, wow. In, during the day, we can plant coral, raise awareness, develop the innovation, and at night, we send the adoption certificates and we allow people to jump in the mission. And so today, we had more than 40,000 people who adopted corals. We, were, we raised millions of euros thanks to that for the mission. And that's a simple way for everyone to join. So the website is it's coralgardeners.org. And today, you can, you can be the, the mom or dad of, of your coral and see it growing on the live stream. And this is just how we exist and we can continue the hard work here. I can see lots of coral parents about to be born. Uh, Tetsuan, thank you so much for joining us. What an inspiration. Please give him an incredible warm round thank of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.